IPFS or Interplanetary File System is a relatively new protocol that can change the way we use the internet. It is an ambitious project with an aim to create a completely decentralized web and it makes use of a lot of revolutionary ideas in computer science to do it. Finally, we can see a solid replacement to the traditional HTTP that we have now. So let's find together whether the future of the web is bright and prosperous. Welcome to DFE channel and in this video we're going to highlight the IPFS platform and its peculiar features. Also we check out if IPFS is really the thing that can change the web as we know it right now and how exactly does the system going to realize the initiative. IPFS is an open source project developed by Protocol Labs with the help of the open source community. It was originally designed by Juan Benet. It is a decentralized file system and a peer-to-peer hypermedia protocol designed to preserve and grow humanity's knowledge by making the web upgradable, resilient and more open. So what is it for and why not to try something common? Of course, it is much easier to go to Google Drive, Dropbox or Amazon Web Services and other cloud storages to upload your files there, but while doing this, you should be prepared for some things. First here, your files may be lost due to a server outage. Then access to the services may be blocked by your country or simply the company providing you with the disk space may use your personal data for personal purposes. For some people, the above points do not cause concern or anxiety, but any system must evolve and further move on. Today, large corporations earn much more from users' personal data than the services that users receive in return. The hypermedia protocol in Web 3.0 mode allows you to store a huge amount of data and then visualize the data provided by each user of the net and finally calculate and store all the information received from P2P connection. A special node complies the information and determines what information to show. These nodes can also push content and check the content source, all the while checking that files inside the system are not subject to censorship. So if you still can get why we are supposed to replace HTTP, well, IPFS has an answer to that. The IPFS seeks to change the current rooted HTTP web and account for its current flaws like inefficiency, centralization, connection availability, and so much more. But is it really possible to do? To answer this question, let's overview how IPFS works and what features it may offer to finally refresh the net. IPFS is a P2P storage network, so content is accessible through peers located anywhere in the world that rely on information or store it. IPFS knows how to find what you ask for using its content addresses rather than its location. There are three fundamental principles to understanding IPFS. First here is content addressing. IPFS uses content addressing to identify content by what's in the content rather than by where the content is located. Every piece of content that uses the IPFS protocol has a content identifier, CID, so remember that. So it is like in its hash. Many distributed systems use content addressing through hashes as a means for not just identifying content, but also linking it together. Then we have a directed acyclic graphs or DAGs. In DAGs, each node also has a unique identifier that takes the form of a hash code. IPFS uses a Merkle DAG that is optimized for representing directories and files, though with Merkle DAG it can be structured in different ways. If you have two similar files here, you can break content into blocks that will share parts of the Merkle DAG. And finally, we have a distributed hash tables or DHTs. DHT used to find which peers are hosting which content to connect to and exchange it. A distributed hash table is one where the tables are split across all the peers in a distributed network. Speaking of general IPFS operating principles, it's also worth mentioning the main features that the protocol provides to its users. 
First here is data archives. So storing archival data using IPFS enables to deduplication cluster persistence in high performance, allowing storage of files almost eternally. Then we have a data providing services. IPFS enables you to store large files off chain and put immutable permanent links in transactions while uh, slashing bandwidth costs. Next thing we have here is increased performance. IPFS can help speed up performance and unlock decentralized archiving, especially when working with large data sets. The following goes data access in offline mode. So P2P IPFS offers resilient access to data independent or latency or backbone connectivity. You might ask a question, what happens when a user contributes a data to IPFS? While we've covered the basic principles, you may still be curious about what happens when you add a file to IPFS. Are you storing that file on your own local node or one operated by an IPFS enabled app? So when you add a file to IPFS, your file is divided into smaller parts. It is cryptographically hashed then and given a unique CID, which is used as a permanent record of your file. When other nodes look up to your file, they ask their peers nodes who is storing the content, so referenced by the file's CID. When they view or download it, um, they cache a copy and become yet another provider of your content until their cache is clear. In this case, anyone who has the file downloaded becomes a source for others that attempt to access this exact file. A node can pin content in order to keep it permanently or in other case, delete content that hasn't been used in a while to save some space. If you add a new version of your file to IPFS, it is, uh, its cryptographic hash becomes different and gets a new CID. This makes the file protected from tampering and censorship as any changes to a file don't override the original one and common pieces across files can be reused in order to minimize storage costs. So what about IPFS unique features? Well, now it becomes clear, but how can it be useful? So let's say for, for instance, for business. Such a protocol can be handy to any businesses working with unique and huge amounts of data. IPFS technology allows different companies and organizations worldwide to build amazing apps and like services while reducing storage and bandwidth costs. Many streaming platforms, developers' platforms, marketplaces, new services like data validation and search projects use IPFS system. So here we've made a list of most visible benefits for companies to help you decide if IPFS is the right way for your organization. First here is immutable addressing. With IPFS, it is impossible to change data without changing its CID. Any changes cause a file to receive a new CID. So this creates a non-destructive workflow, which is excellent for accurate record keeping. Next thing we have here is data verifiability. If your platform depends on specific, verifiably changed content address data, and also providing trusted source data is your main principle and concern, IPFS can provide full data reassurance. Next thing is decentralized data storage and delivery. IPFS provides data storage services, so their datasets enable release and synchronization of data via a decentralized storage networks. This is helpful for companies working with the massive data sets uh, comprising billions of terabytes of information. Yet another thing is data integrity and security. Through users' own keys, users get the benefits of client-side encryption as well as the ability to share data directly without any third-party services. External sources can view these private data and IPFS's content addressing also ensures that the data a user receives is cryptographically verified. Yet another super cool thing, it is censorship. IPFS content addressing allows for multiple copies of the same content addressing resource to exist as an equivalent items in multiple locations worldwide. Okay, so though the project provides quite an appealing list of advantages, you see that some people still prefer a different approach here. If IPFS didn't manage to catch your attention, but you're still in search for something similar to that, so there are well-known alternatives over here. 
First one that comes into my mind is BitTorrent, one of the oldest decentralized data storage networks. It was initially known as a platform for sharing pirate media and later it evolved into an entire suite of products including the BitTorrent file system. So we got BTFS, it is a blockchain based and uses the Tron network. There are more than a thousand full Tron nodes and more than a hundred million user nodes in place. It was designed to reduce the storage costs and also improve fault tolerance and avoid governance censorships, allowing both file transfer and storage. Another alternative here is called Filecoin. It is a P2P network service that uses blockchain and native cryptocurrency to deliver storage services. Users pay FIL tokens to store their files and miners in storage nodes. They can also earn FIL to store files. The blockchain ledger records the transactions and provide proof that miners are storing files correctly. The Filecoin project is open source and encourages the storage providers, consumers and developers to build apps on top of this file system. However, there is one thing because the Lotus nodes used by Filecoin are only supported on Linux and MacOS. Third one here is called R-Wave. R-Wave is a P2P blockchain storage protocol that offers extra storage capacities available on PCs and they act as the R-Wave clients. The application that enables data storage and any other functionality is called Permaweb. The Permaweb is an immutable environment for storing web pages and other types of data such as like static files. Unlike any other decentralized data storage, R-Wave here is designed for data permanence. The platform is fully community operated and is designed to work only with Linux. Fourth one is Safe Network. It is an anonymous global network made up for storage nodes. Collectively, the software manages storage across the networks, routing data and messages securely between the nodes. Nodes are clustered into sections that control the data stored with them. Safe Network does not use blockchain or any other type of public ledger, make it easier to scale the network while eliminating the need to synchronize ledger data across the nodes. Anyone can join the network anonymously as a provider and also anyone can store data or access public information on the network. Safe Network also provides an API that developers can use to interact directly with the network. Okay, so wrapping it up, as you can see, IPFS is a technical and conceptual representation of a protocol that has great ambitions to revolutionize communication over the entire internet. HTTP was best known in its own right and helped get the internet where it is actually today. But on a global scale, I think new technologies should step in and reform and get new profits to become apparent. Who knows, maybe in the future, the IPFS concept will be something natural and usual as we have HTTP nowadays. But for now, we're done here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, feel free to share them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to also subscribe to our channel and hit the like button and see you around.